Alex, we're here to talk about retired MLB slugger Adam Dunn. Uh, for the folks out there, can you sum up Adam Dunn in one sentence? The weirdest baseball career since the inception of the sport. Exactly right. So, Alex, we're going to say some things about Adam Dunn that are not exactly flattering because you can't tell the story of Adam Dunn statistically without saying some sad stuff. So, before we start, Adam Dunn, if you're watching, I like you and I think you're really cool. Alex, say something nice about Adam Dunn. You have great hair? First, let's agree. Adam Dunn was a special dude. Here is every single guy ever to hit a home run in Major League Baseball through the end of 2017. That's 7,838. Now here's every player to hit at least 400 career home runs. That's a club of only 55 hitters, and Adam Dunn is a member. With 462 long bombs, Dunn ranks tied for 36 all time. But that underplays just how hard he clobbered the ball early in his career. Here are those guys again, the top 55 home run hitters of all time. These 55 lines represent their career home run totals after each season of their careers, right? This is completely unreadable, so let's just pick a few out of the pile. Babe Ruth is here. Ruth, of course, spent his first few years pitching and didn't even really start hitting home runs until his sixth season, which makes his career total of 714 all the more terrifying. Here's Ted Williams, who was off to one of the greatest starts in baseball history until he lost three years to military service. Here is our old buddy Barry Bonds. He was already raking for years, but toward the end of his career, he started exercising and eating well-balanced breakfast, eventually becoming the all-time home run champion. There's one guy in the neighborhood who has a fighting chance of catching Bonds right now, and that's Albert Pujols. He finished his 17th season with 614 home runs, right up there with Bonds 613 in the same age. I'm a little doubtful Pujols can catch Bonds, but then again, I am constantly wrong about everything. Anyway, I hope that gives you a little context for what you're about to see. Here is Adam Dunn. As a young power hitter, he was fearsome and consistent. He very clearly rises toward the top of the pack here. In fact, after 10 seasons, he was off to the third best home run hitting start out of all these guys. Five years later, Adam Dunn was out of baseball completely. What happened between this and that? Well, 2011 happened. So Alex, you have been studying Adam Dunn's infamous 2011 season, yes? It is very worth studying. Please promise me you're gonna tell the folks about the Clayton Kershaw thing. I promise, John. In 2011, whenever Dunn faced a lefty on the mound to be specific, his baseball abilities were relegated to somewhere between that of a drunk penguin and a blindfolded three-toed sloth. Which is weird because throughout the first decade of his career, the left-handed Dunn was totally competent, generally even downright good against southpaws, as reflected in his slugging percentage, which is a metric that basically takes batting average and then properly weighs extra base hits. Dunn slugged 465 against lefties over those first 10 years never dropping under 416 in a single season. Now, he may have started a bit of a decline in the years approaching 2011, but still no one could have foreseen one of the most spectacular and extreme outliers in baseball history. Beginning with a strikeout here versus Tony Sipp on April 3rd, and ending with a flyout at the hands of Everett Tiford on September 24th, Dunn had 94 at-bats versus lefties in 2011. He turned those 94 at-bats into five singles and a double. That's seven total bases and 94 at-bats. Good for a slugging percentage of 074. Let's give that 074 number some context. Among players in the live ball era with that many at-bats in a season versus left-handed pitchers, no one else is under 116. And since 1975, that 074 mark is literally half the next worst season of futility versus lefties. And the fact that Dunn could possibly sink that low versus lefties is one of the reasons he's the subject of probably the most bizarre and remarkable dominance of a pitcher the sport has ever seen. That pitcher is Clayton Kershaw, a lefty that's built a resume you can stack against any pitcher ever. And against fellow lefties, he's borderline unfair. Consider that for his career, he holds him under the Mendoza line. In other words, a batting average under 200. And he once had a two and a half year run where it was virtually impossible for left-handed hitters to homer off him. It started off here on June 15th, 2012, and no lefty went yard for nearly 15 months until Jay Bruce took him deep twice on September 8th, 2013. And that was immediately followed by another lengthy drought that lasted nearly another full calendar year. For those scoring at home, that's a 543 inning stretch 
in which he allowed just two homers to lefties. So you'd figure when Dunn faces him, he might as well bring a toothpick to the plate instead of a bat, right? Well, let's take a look at the 160 batters that have faced Kershaw as much as Dunn has. We see poor Justin Maxwell here at the bottom, hitless in his 15 at-bats. Working our way up, we predictably see that most of the guys are pretty pathetic against him. But then there's Dunn, who pretty much took Kershaw behind the woodshed and totally lapped the field, slugging nearly double what the next best mark is after going 8 for 13 with four dingers and two doubles over the course of their 14 career showdowns. Why? Because baseball makes zero sense. I gotta agree with you. Uh, baseball is completely senseless, meaningless, chaotic. It symbolizes nothing. It's, it's a mess. But it's also beautiful because baseball is the one sport where if you play it right, you don't have to do anything. That's the American dream. The three true outcomes hitter is a baseball institution. It describes a hitter who either walks, strikes out, or hits a home run. In other words, a lot of the time, he doesn't even have to run to first. Let's add hit by pitch to this equation because you don't have to run to first after that either. Four true outcomes hitters are tank-like and they are beautiful. They render everyone but themselves, the pitcher, and the catcher completely unnecessary. For a brief moment, they turn baseball into golf. Here's how they became what they are today. These dots represent every player who's hit at least 200 home runs, plotted by what percentage of their plate appearances ended with one of the four true outcomes. At about 39%, Babe Ruth was the original four true outcomes hitter. The Babe was an outlier in every way, including this one. Nobody avoided running nearly as often as he did. The more recent revolutionary was Rob Deere, who ended an astounding 49.8% of his career plate appearances with a walk, strikeout, home run, or hit by pitch. Deere was an icon. He was one of the most dependable home run hitters of his era, and yet he never made an all-star team. He never received an MVP vote. He couldn't possibly because he struck out at rates that didn't seem possible. Take 1987, for example, in which he struck out 186 times. That season, more than 1% of all American League strikeouts belonged to Rob Deere. Now, Deere is a true outcomes legend, but Adam Dunn is the god. He is the only player in the history of baseball to avoid having to run to first for more than half his plate appearances. And if you zero in on the five-year window in the middle of his career from 2004 through 2008, his true outcome consistency was like a metronome. Five straight years, he reached 40 homers, 100 walks, and 150 strikeouts. No one else in MLB history hit those figures in a season more than twice in their entire career. And given the fact that during this time he was cranking out nearly twice as many fly balls as ground balls on the rare occasion he did put the ball in play, and well, you gotta figure being an opposing infielder while Dunn stood at the dish was just about the easiest job in sports, ripe for copious amounts of daydreaming and nailing down the meaning of life. Uh, Alex, uh, just very quickly, um, what is the meaning of life? Now, before we go, let's talk about all that standing around they're doing. In those four true outcomes we were talking about, there's no fielding, right? Only the pitcher and catcher are necessary. The other seven fielders are doing absolutely nothing. Once in a while, one of them might be needed to catch a pickoff throw or catch a guy stealing or something, but for simplicity's sake, let's ignore that. Throughout his career, Adam Dunn had 4,244 of those four true outcomes, and in the era in which he played, there were about 77 plate appearances, both sides combined, in an average baseball game. Therefore, Adam Dunn had approximately 55 entire baseball games worth of no fielding. Let's suppose it were possible to consolidate all of Adam Dunn's four true outcomes into 55 terrible, unwatchable, wretched games. We could say, hey, seven of these nine fielders would just stand around for 55 games, so let's not even sign them to play. Now, based on a rough estimate of the average MLB salary in Dunn's era, we can guess that nearly $7 million could have been saved. So if you think about it, Dunn's a hero. He forced baseball teams to pay guys a total of nearly seven million bucks to just stand there. He's a creator of pointless labor. There's nothing more heroic than that. So Alex, I don't think I'm stretching when I call him a hero, am I? Not all heroes wear capes. Right? Baseball players should wear capes, that'd be cool. That'd be awesome. A button-up shirt and a cape, that's a look. 
Uh, next episode, be sure to tune in because we are going to talk about the least Adam Dunn person of all time. And who is that? Ricky Henderson. Hell yeah.